Europe, 1940. Hitler's ruthless quest to extend Germany's borders has his people at war with the world. The mobilization of armies by Britain and France proves no deterrent as the Nazis invade their European neighbors to the north and west while extending their reach eastward towards Russia's critical oil fields. By fall, Germany's lightning war to soften England is launched, and America increases production, racing to aid the British. By 1941, the battle for North Africa is on as Rommel's Africa Corps arrives in Tripoli. On the Eastern Front, an impatient Hitler breaks his pact with the Soviets. Stalin responds with a scorched earth policy, intent on leaving only ruins for the Nazi invaders. But one by one, his cities fall. Now, in 1942, massive German air raids commence against Stalingrad, and the battle for this noble city turns vicious. The Red Army refuses to retreat, and a counteroffensive is launched against a force that now stretches from the Volga to the Atlantic and deep into the African desert. Against impossible odds, millions come forward to answer the call of their countries, their families, their lives. By controlling North Africa, the Axis powers would have a better chance of holding the Mediterranean, now the epicenter of the war. Unfortunately for Italian dictator Benito Mussolini, his army is ill-prepared to withstand the British forces in the region. Hitler, fearful that more losses in Africa would jeopardize his efforts on the Russian front, sends General Rommel and his Africa Corps to clean up the mess. By 1942, the Allies decide that the best way to break the Axis powers back is to create another front. An Operation Torch is born of British and American troops, a well-supported, coordinated push through enemy lines. Depleting and destroying fuel, food, and equipment would mean the eventual fall of the Third Reich in Africa, weakening Axis aggression throughout the world. All goes as planned, and by January 1943, British General Montgomery's 8th Army has Rommel and his troops on the run, scrambling to make their valiant last stand at the Marath Line. By 1944, in the battle to regain their Russian homeland, the Red Army crushes the German pocket at Stalingrad, marking the first major defeat of Hitler's armies. On June 6th, D-Day, the Allies stage a massive sea and air invasion on the Normandy coast, that will soon lead to a full-scale retreat of Germany's once powerful armies across France and Belgium. Inspired by this success, British Field Marshal Montgomery devises a plan he insists will end the war by Christmas, codenamed Market Garden. With momentum on their side, the Allies attack Germany's industrial heartland from the north, attempting to outflank the powerful Siegfried Line, intending to drive on to Berlin. But Montgomery's plan fails miserably when the final bridge across the Rhine cannot be secured. Painful defeat and staggering losses destroy all hope for an early end to the war, and surviving allies are ordered back to France. Fortunately, by October, with the Siegfried Line finally breached from the west, the Americans prepare for the capture of Aachen, a city destined for the dubious distinction of being the first major German city to fall to Allied forces. March 1945. With the bridge across the Rhine into Remagen secured, the Allies pour into Germany, bringing the fight against the Nazis directly to the Third Reich's doorstep. German forces in the Ruhr River Valley surrender as the Soviets reach Berlin. The once proud, seemingly invincible German army, which had sought to usurp additional territory from neighbors as far as the Soviet Union to the western edge of Europe and North Africa, is now forced to desperately defend and hold on to its own original homeland. The unconditional surrender of all German forces to the Allies, without which President Roosevelt had declared the war could not end, would not be long in the making. A world that had long been at war would soon be able to rejoice.